Have you ever noticed how two people can follow the exact same intermittent fasting schedule yet have completely different results? One person fasts for 16 hours and feels clear-headed, focused, and energized. The other struggles to make it past 12 hours, feeling drained, foggy, and irritable. Most people assume the difference comes down to discipline, genetics, or how long they fast. But that assumption quietly leads many people to fail without ever understanding why. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Fasting longer does not automatically make fasting more effective. In fact, for many people, extending the fasting window only increases fatigue without improving fat loss, metabolic health, or energy levels. And that's where frustration sets in. You start wondering if intermittent fasting just doesn't work for you. But what if the problem isn't how long you're fasting, but what your body is doing during that fast? By the end of this video, you'll understand why so many people never activate the real benefits of fasting and how a simple daily habit can change everything. For years, intermittent fasting has been framed as a simple equation. The longer you fast, the better the results. Skip breakfast, push lunch later, maybe even try a 24-hour fast. But this mindset is where many people unknowingly sabotage their own progress. When you only focus on extending the fasting window, you assume your body will automatically switch into fat-burning mode on its own. In reality, that switch is far less automatic than most advice makes it sound. For many people, longer fasting just means running low on fuel without accessing the right backup system. That's when energy crashes show up, concentration drops, and motivation disappears. This is why some people feel worse the longer they fast, not better. The issue isn't a lack of willpower or not being cut out for fasting. The issue is that fasting alone doesn't guarantee your metabolism actually shifts gears. To understand why fasting sometimes works beautifully and other times feels miserable, you need to understand how your body actually fuels itself. When you eat a meal, your body breaks that food down into glucose, which becomes your primary source of energy. Your blood sugar rises, insulin goes up, and your cells use that glucose right away. Any excess doesn't disappear, it gets stored as glycogen in your liver and muscles, like a backup fuel tank. For the first several hours after eating, your body simply runs on that stored glucose. Nothing dramatic happens yet. But as time passes, usually somewhere between 8 and 12 hours without food, those glycogen stores begin to run low. This is the moment your body starts feeling the pressure to adapt. If glucose is no longer available, your metabolism has to decide whether to keep struggling or switch to an alternative fuel. That alternative is stored body fat. Fat gets broken down into fatty acids, and some of those are converted by the liver into ketones, an incredibly efficient energy source, especially for the brain. This transition is often called the metabolic switch. Here's the critical detail most people miss. That switch doesn't flip instantly, and for many people, it never fully flips at all. The metabolic switch sounds simple in theory. Run out of glucose, burn fat instead. But in real life, Many people get trapped in an uncomfortable middle zone. Glycogen is low, glucose is scarce, yet fat burning hasn't fully ramped up. This is the state where fasting feels hardest and least rewarding. Energy drops, mental fog creeps in, and the body feels like it's running on fumes. Most people assume this discomfort means fasting is working, or worse, that their body just isn't suited for it. In reality, it means the switch hasn't fully engaged. Your metabolism is waiting for a stronger signal to commit to fat as its primary fuel. Without that signal, your body hesitates conserving energy instead of producing it efficiently. This is why so many people quit fasting right here, convinced it's not sustainable. But the problem isn't fasting itself. The problem is that the switch needs a push, and that push doesn't come from waiting longer or trying harder. That missing push is movement specifically, walking during your fasting window. Not intense workouts, not long cardio sessions, just steady, intentional walking. When you walk while fasted, you send your body a clear message. Energy is needed right now, and there's no incoming food to supply it. This is where everything changes. Inside your cells is an energy sensor called AMPK. Think of it as your body's master metabolic switch. When energy is abundant, AMPK stays quiet, 
But when energy drops, especially during fasting, AMPK starts paying attention. Walking amplifies that signal. Fasting activates AMPK. Walking activates AMPK. Together, they don't just add up, they multiply. This is why fasted walking accelerates fat burning and helps your body commit fully to using stored fat and ketones for fuel. It's also why simply fasting longer often backfires. Waiting doesn't strengthen the signal. Movement does. Researchers call this a synergistic effect, where two inputs create a result neither can achieve alone. It's no coincidence that medications like metformin work partly by activating AMPK. You're triggering the same pathway naturally, for free, with your own body. And because walking is low stress and sustainable, it sends the right signal without overwhelming your system. This is the moment many people finally feel fasting. Click. Energy steadies, hunger quiets, and the switch stops hovering halfway it flips. Once AMPK is activated consistently, the effects go far deeper than burning a little extra fat. Inside your muscle cells are thousands of tiny structures called mitochondria, your cellular power plants. Their job is to turn fuel into usable energy. When you walk in a fasted state, your body recognizes a clear problem. Energy demand is rising, but no food is coming in. Instead of panicking, it adapts. Your body starts building more mitochondria and improving how efficiently they work. This process is called mitochondrial biogenesis, and it's one of the reasons fasted walking feels hard at first, but easier over time. During the first week or two, many people feel sluggish and assume something is wrong. In reality, their system is upgrading. As mitochondria increase and become better at burning fat, energy production becomes smoother and more reliable. This is why people often report feeling more energized in a fasted state after a few weeks, not less. At the same time, enzymes responsible for releasing fatty acids from stored fat become more active, making fuel easier to access. You're no longer scraping by on empty, you're running on a more efficient engine. As your cells become more efficient, your hormones begin to shift in a way that makes fat loss feel less like a fight. When you fast, insulin levels naturally drop. Insulin is the hormone that tells your body to store energy. So when insulin stays low, stored fat becomes far more accessible. Walking during this low insulin state improves insulin sensitivity, meaning that when you do eat, nutrients are directed into your muscles instead of being stored as fat. At the same time, fasted walking increases adrenaline, a hormone that directly signals fat cells to release energy. Growth hormone rises as well, helping preserve lean muscle while promoting fat burning. Many people worry about cortisol, the so-called stress hormone, during fasting. But here's the nuance most advice misses. Gentle walking actually smooths cortisol, not spikes it. Instead of sharp energy crashes, you get a steadier output across the fasting window. The result is fewer cravings, calmer focus, and a body that finally feels like it's working with you instead of against you. One of the most surprising benefits of fasted walking has nothing to do with fat loss. It's what happens in your brain. Many people assume skipping food will make them tired, unfocused, or mentally slow. But once your body begins relying on fat, your brain starts running on ketones, a fuel source that burns cleaner and more steadily than glucose. This is why so many people describe a calm, clear, almost effortless focus during a fasted walk. There's no spike, no crash, just stable energy. Walking adds another layer to this effect by increasing levels of BDNF, short for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. You can think of BDNF as fertilizer for your brain. It helps build new neural connections, strengthens memory, and protects brain cells as you age. Fasting increases BDNF. Walking increases BDNF. Together, they amplify it. This combination also supports healthier dopamine and serotonin signaling, which explains why many people feel more motivated, emotionally balanced, and mentally sharp after a morning walk, often without needing that second cup of coffee. The clarity isn't imagined. It's chemistry. Here's where many people leave results on the table without realizing it. 
Your body doesn't just respond to what you do, it responds to when you do it. Every major organ runs on an internal clock. Your brain sets the rhythm with light exposure, but movement is what synchronizes everything else. Walking in the morning, toward the end of your fasting window, sends a powerful timing signal to your metabolism. Studies comparing exercise before breakfast versus after show, a striking difference. Fat utilization can be up to three times higher when movement happens before eating. That doesn't mean afternoon or evening walks are useless, any movement helps, but morning fasted walking appears to unlock a unique metabolic advantage. From an evolutionary perspective, this makes sense. Humans moved first, ate later. Your body still carries that programming. When you walk before your first meal, you're not forcing fat loss, you're aligning with a rhythm your metabolism already understands. Putting this into practice doesn't require perfection or extreme discipline. The goal is consistency, not intensity. The ideal time for a fasted walk is toward the end of your fasting window, when your body has already used most of its stored fuel. If you follow a typical 16 to 8 schedule and eat between noon and 8 p.m., a morning walk between 7 and 9 a.m. works well for most people. Pace matters too. You want a brisk walk, not a stroll, not a jog? A pace where you can still talk, but you wouldn't want to sing. For most adults, that's around 3 to 3.5 miles per hour. Keep it simple. 20 to 30 minutes is enough. More is not better. If you're new, start shorter and let your body adapt. Hydration matters, especially when fasting. Drink water before and after your walk. And if you sweat easily or fast longer, a pinch of salt can help maintain electrolytes. This practice should leave you feeling clearer and steadier, not depleted. If it doesn't, that's a signal to scale back, not push harder. When fasted, walking becomes a regular part of your routine. The benefits don't stay confined to those 20 or 30 minutes. They ripple outward into the rest of your day. During the first week or two, Many people notice mild fatigue or resistance that's normal. Your body is learning to access fat more efficiently. But then, something shifts. Energy becomes more stable instead of spiking and crashing. The mid-afternoon slump that used to send you reaching for snacks or another cup of coffee starts to fade. Hunger feels calmer, not urgent. Over time, your metabolism develops what researchers call metabolic flexibility. The ability to smoothly switch between burning carbohydrates and burning fat, depending on what's available. Most people who eat frequently never build this skill. Their bodies stay locked into glucose mode. With consistent fasted walking, your system becomes adaptable. You're no longer dependent on constant fuel to function well. This is why many people report better sleep quality, fewer cravings, and a sense that their body is finally cooperating. Weight management becomes more sustainable, not because you're forcing restriction, but because your metabolism is doing its job more efficiently. When you step back and look at the full picture, fasted walking isn't about burning a few extra calories or following another health trend. It's about teaching your body how to produce energy the way it was designed to. Intermittent fasting opens the door, but walking is what actually pushes your metabolism through it. Together, they activate deeper biological systems, AMPK, mitochondrial growth, hormonal balance, and brain clarity that fasting alone often never reaches. This is why some people feel worse the longer they fast, while others feel better, sharper, and more energized. The difference isn't willpower, it's alignment. You don't need to punish your body to change it. You need to give it the right signal. A simple daily walk, done at the right time, can shift how you burn fat, how you think, and how you feel throughout the day. If you've ever felt like fasting wasn't working for you, this might be the missing piece you've been overlooking.